Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome for uh, welcome to <laughs> welcome today. I'm so glad. Oops. I'm so glad you all joined me uh, in this free training here about how to elevate your craft business through a summit. And we've got some folks that are straggling in, so I'm just going to kind of keep an eye out on that. While we're waiting, I want to make sure that you all can hear me. So if you can put in the chat box where you're from and what you hope to get out of this training today. So if you can hear me, please do put in the chat box. Right. Oh, yes. Okay. It looks like people are um, chiming in. That's awesome. Just give me a couple of minutes to get everybody in. I love to see where everybody's coming from. I know that we have got a bunch of people in from lots of different places around the globe. So that is really exciting. And I know that a lot of you um, are going to be watching the replay as well. So welcome those who are going to be watching on the replay. All right, let me just take a look at the time. I'm going to give about two more minutes to get everybody else on who is going to be coming today. And then we will get started. We will have a lot of information to go through today. So I want to ask everyone to keep themselves muted as far as your audio goes. And once we get through the entire presentation, if I have not answered your questions, uh, we will definitely have time to do some Q&A. Also want to um, ask you if you have questions as we are going through the presentations, please do put those in the chat box. And at the end, I will be um, reviewing all of those questions. And if I don't get to them um, during the presentation, then I will definitely uh, make sure to address them in some fashion after the presentation. All right, let's give it one more minute and then we will go ahead and get started. All right, the other thing I'd like for you all to confirm is that you're seeing my slide deck on your screen. You should be seeing a PDF that says elevate your craft business through a summit. Awesome, Libby, thank you for letting me know. You know, sometimes Zoom is a little bit tricky and there's a lot of, lot of little squares and lots of little windows on my screen right now. I just wanna make sure everybody's seeing the same thing. Thank you so much for giving me feedback. All right, you guys, let's get to it. Let me move some of these windows out of my way. All right, so just to let you know, I have um, kept the participant box on my screen, but the other ones I have moved to the other screen. So I can't actually see your faces while I'm, per while, while I'm performing. Yeah, uh, while I'm presenting, um, so uh, that way I have less distractions, but I do keep the participation box up so I can kind of keep an eye on if anybody else is um, coming in late. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming to the training today. Elevate your craft through uh, your craft business through a summit. Um, the purpose of a summit really is to collaborate and rise with the tide. Um, we just finished our first card maker success summit in July. It was a huge, huge success. And if you ask any of the speakers who participated in um, this past summit, I think they will agree. One of the reasons why I want to do this uh, presentation is to help other crafters, other card makers out there kind of understand what a card, uh, what a summit can do for your business and specifically going through how to increase your email subscriber list. So let's just go through it. We're going to do an agenda. Um, here is the agenda for today. One, we're gonna do a little bit of an intro. I'm gonna talk a little bit about who I am and how I've come um, to this position in terms of my craft business. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about why having an email subscription list is important. 
and I've abbreviated ESL. So if you see ESL throughout the slide deck, um, that is what I'm referring to. Then we're going to share, I'm going to share five tips on how to grow your email subscriber list. I'm going to share some suggested tech resources. These are resources that I use in my business. We're going to go over a little bit more about what a craft virtual summit is. Then we're going to talk a little bit about what's involved in being a craft, uh, being a speaker of a craft summit, and then how that can elevate your brand, increase your email subscriber list, and then also make an income while doing that. We all like to make money, I'm sure. So definitely want to get into all of that. Then we're going to talk a little bit about some case studies from our last summit. And if uh, any of the speakers are, um, that were participated in the last summit is in this call right now, I'm sure they can um, testify to some of the, the statistics that we're going to share and know how diligent I was about creating, or not creating, collecting data um, pre-summit versus post-summit to kind of get an idea of how this has impacted our speakers. I mean, obviously, I know how it's impacted my bottom line, but I think it was really important for me to um, determine um, number-wise how it impacted our speakers. And then we're going to go into next steps. And next steps is going to cover um, some details on our upcoming summit, which will happen in February. And if you're interested, after um, going through all of this um, and becoming a speaker, there's a process um, that I've laid out and uh, we're going to figure out how to do that. All right. Okay, so here it is. This is uh, Who's Brandy, and I am the creative owner and, uh, of stampmesomelove.com um, LLC. I just uh, formed my, li uh, what is it called? Limited liability or limited, I don't know. Anyway, some sort of legal um, entity I formed um, after the summit. It's just brand new. So I have to make sure I put the LLC everywhere. I've still got a lot of places on my website, everywhere else where I need to update that. But anyway, so I own the following brands, the Stamp Me Some Love um, blog, and which is at stampmesomelove.com, and then um, the Stamp Me Some Love Academy, which is on a teachable platform, and then I've got a Shopify store at um, stampmesomelove-shop.com, and then most recently I am the host of the Cardmaker Success Summit. I am a lifetime long crafter and professionally crafting since 2018. I would consider myself a master networker. Uh, my previous uh, career business before I got into crafting was real estate. I was a realtor here in the States. Um, I did um, about seven or eight years in Texas. And then when I moved to Kentucky, I continued that license here. So I would consider myself a master networker. You have to be a people person um, when you're in those types of businesses. And even though I consider myself an introvert, I do find the benefit of being able to bring people together, uh, whether for your own benefit or for others. So I find myself to be a master networker. I have a bachelor's in science in recreation administration, if you can believe there is such a degree for that. Um, that is from the Texas, uh, Southwest Texas State University. I currently live in Kentucky, Versailles, uh, excuse me, Versailles, Kentucky with my wife and my four fur babies. Now, just to give you a little bit of a glimpse of how I got to this point, as far as my professional career in crafting, um, I became a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in 2017, just as a hobby. I had previously been a scrapbooker, had worked at scrapbook stores, and of course, when digital media came out and everybody was doing digital photos, I kind of let that go to the wayside, although I carried all of those supplies probably over too many moves to mention. Um, in, in 2018, I decided, to, I decided to start a blog where I was primarily promoting Stampin' Up! and their products and, you know, potentially growing my team as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but I quickly decided that that was not the way I wanted to go. And so, um, figuring out early on, thank goodness, that 
the only way that you're ever going to make any money in a Stampin' Up! type environment was to grow a team, which was not my personality. And so I decided I wanted to reach individual um, people and just teach them how to make cards. Now, the problem with that is that although I was putting out lots of great content, lots of free videos, and people were gobbling up, I wasn't making any money off of it because most uh, Stampin' Up! customers have their own demonstrator that they're very loyal to. So I wasn't really able to make much as far as sales goes in product. So in 2019, I made the decision to step down from Stampin' Up! and um, basically started building my affiliate brands with different um, manufacturers and stores like scrapbook.com and those sorts of things and getting some uh, design team work. In 2020, right before COVID hit, I thought I had the huge idea that I was going to start teaching virtual classes namely on Zoom. And I thought I was going to be, you know, just this breakout crafter and I was just going to dominate the world. And then COVID hit and then everyone scrambled. And then, then you started to see virtual classes per, per, uh, popping up everywhere. So my dream of being that breakout star did not happen in 2020 like I thought it was going to be. Uh, but I still taught classes online and taught classes um, live over Zoom. And in the fall of 2020, I decided that I was missing an opportunity as far as uh, product sales goes. And I decided to open up my own store and for the main purpose of um, sourcing uh, products to sell for my classes. But then, of course, when you have wholesale accounts, you always have lots of extra stuff that you need to get rid of. So I use the store to sell that stuff. So um, in the fall of uh, 2020, I decided I was going to do something really big. And that's where the summit came along. And so that's where I'm at. Um, my passion is to throw parties and I love to network. All right, so let's move on to the next screen. Maybe. There we go. All right. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of the training and the whole reason why you came to today. And that is to find out more about an email subscriber list and why it is super important. First of all, when you have an email subscriber list, you own your list and you, you can market to this list at any time you want. You don't have to rely on uh, other people's platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. All of those platforms could go away at any time. And if you do not have your audience's contact information, namely their email list, then you have just lost the opportunity to market to them. Namely, or also I should say, when you rely on other people's platforms, um, they can change their algorithm any, any, any time. About four or five years ago, four or five years ago, Facebook groups was the number one way to grow your, your audience. And, um, you know, if you were in a group, you almost, you could almost guarantee that your folks were going to be seeing your stuff. That is no longer the case. They have prioritized the way things show up in audiences feeds and so it's kind of, it's getting harder and harder to reach those people and with your own email subscriber list you can reach out them at any time you can email them at any time you can tell them anything you want and you don't have to um, you know rely on somebody else's algorithm the, the second thing is that you can monetize it so I will tell you that um, as I have grown my email list um, I did a study last year and the year before that about 80% of all the revenue that I incur, or incurred, earned over the year came from a direct email that I sent to them. So that was in a, a way that, for example, I could send them an email that took them directly to a uh, cart, uh, a, a link to a shopping cart to buy something or I sent them a post about, um, or not a post, but sent them an email about a blog post that I just posted, directing them to that blog post. 
and then they would, you know, look at the blog post. And if I had any affiliate products on there and they linked through, then they were able to purchase it. And then, of course, I got a small commission from it. I also do uh, emails where I will include a supply list right there in the email and I can track to see um, what income I'm, I'm getting from that directly from the email. So you can't really understand until you have an email subscriber list how valuable it is. Monetizing your list is the number one thing I can think of that you need to be doing in order to grow your brand and your business. Lastly, the another reason why it's very important is that you find your crafty tribe. Now we're going to talk a little bit in a minute about how to get people on your email list. But um, kind of jumping ahead is that when you are putting out content that compels someone to opt into your email list, those are your audience members. Those are your crafty tribe people. Those are the people who are going to like, um, uh, know, like, and trust you and eventually going to buy from you. So it's really important to cultivate that. All right. We're going to go through five different tips on how to grow your email subscription list. Tip number one is to create a free resource. And I'm going to be using a lot of jargon here that is in the blogging world. And I'm going to try um, when I see it to point out different terms. And so this first term, a free resource can also be called a freebie or it can also be called a lead magnet. Examples of what a free resource could be in our field could be a PDF, a PDF that explains some sort of technique or tutorial or perhaps um, color swatches, anything like that. A video tutorial, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Any kind of pattern that you may have, um, if you're into quilting or whatever, there's patterns, those sorts of, that sort of thing. A downloadable file, an example of that would be like an SG, SVG file if you're using Cricut or Silhouette and you use this in your paper crafting. You can um, uh, create something and then allow your, your person to opt in and download that. Now down below on this um, screen here, it's kind of a little step by step here. Um, the first thing you want to do is want to create an opt in form or a landing page with your email marketing platform. Now I will be sharing a little bit later on the email marketing platform that I use and I'm going to uh, when we're finished with this slide here, I'm going to show you an example of my freebie resource and my opt-in forms and my landing pages. So uh, you want to have some sort of way to automate the delivery of your lead magnet. So what this essentially looks like is you've got the form or you've got the landing page, your audience goes to that page, they see the instructions, they put in their name, their email address, and they hit submit. Then after that, what happens? Well, you need a way to be able to, number one, add that person to your email um, subscriber list. And two, you need a way of delivering that lead magnet to them. So that could be a pop-up window that shows up once they hit submit. It could be an email that gets automatically delivered to them with a way to download the lead magnet, that sort of thing. Now, once you have that set up, you want to advertise this opt-in form and landing page everywhere. An example of this, I will show you in a minute, is on the main page of your website. You want to have a free resource of some sort and probably your best free resource listed on your main page of your website. Another way of advertising it is to have an exit intent pop-up which means that when somebody goes to close out the window or it looks like they're going to be going to a different window, then a pop-up comes up and it gives them another opportunity to um, opt in. Um, your Facebook business page, definitely want to make sure that you've got a um, resource there somewhere where they can opt into that. You want to post on your Instagram posts, your stories, your YouTube videos, and then lastly, consider um, running ads. 
All right, so before we move on, let me just hop out of here and let me show a different screen. All right. Okay, tell me if you guys can see that, what you're looking at. I have 10 steps to organize my craft room. Everybody see that? Okay, good, awesome. Okay, so this is a five page PDF that I have, um, that I created. I use Canva, nothing special. And it's just basically a PDF and it's a little checklist of things that you need to do when you're organizing your craft room. And there's some basic information. That's all it is. That is what I consult, consider a freebie. Now let's get out of there and let me share with you my... Okay. my website okay can you tell me are you guys seeing my website yes. okay Libby you are on it thank you so much all right so here is my main page on my website got lots of different things here but my main main focus on my main page is this get our free organization checklist because this is probably my number one freebie resource when I click on this link it brings me to this pop-up and I put in my email, my name and my email address and I hit send me the, the checklist. Now I will do this for you. Uh, let's see here. This is a little bit more advanced, but I wanna just kind of get your wheels spinning. So this is the free resource. I hit send me the checklist and then I get this screen right here, which is a trip wire. And this is kind of beyond the scope of this training right here. But in the background, that uh, PDF that I promised them is um, going through email. So they'll be able to get an email with a place to download the free resource. But now I have this little checklist here, or not checklist, but this, uh, what they call a tripwire, which basically gives them an option to purchase something a little bit more expansive, which is my... Um, craft room organization guide and I can't remember how many pages it is but it's a much beefier version of um, my checklist and so you can kind of see there all of the different pages there so that's just one thing to take a look at I'm not going to go over how you set this up in this training um, but that's um, just something to, to be thinking about all right so let me see oh I also wanted to show you an opt-in uh, pop-up let me see Okay, tell me if you can see my incognito window of my website. I needed to do this um, in, in incognito so you can see uh, what happens. Yes, okay. So, you know, I'm scrolling through, scrolling through as a reader. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Look at all this. Oh, she's got one blog post or whatever. Well, I think I want to close this window to see what happened. So as I go to close the window, I got that same pop up. And so this is um, what you would call an exit intent pop up. Uh, I believe the technology that I used for this was the pages. I'd have to look real quick and I'm really sure. So those are two options. Um, let's see if I can show you another opt in form on one of my blog posts, I believe. Let me see. Uh, So here is an opt-in form to register for one of my classes. Um, I know this one's got an opt-in form. This one's got oops, wrong one. Sorry. All right. So if I scroll down here, I should see an opt-in form somewhere. Here we go. This is an opt-in form. 
So this is a form that I created in my email marketing platform, and then I copied some code and I pasted it in here. And so this right here is a form. I'll give you an example of a landing page and see if it's still up. So this was the landing page for our Cardmaker Success Summit. And so this is a landing page because there's nothing on here that anyone can do other than opt into the summit. So there's a bunch of buttons where they can put their information in, but there's no header, there's no menu up here to get them distracted. That's what I consider a landing page. All right, so let's get back on task and go back to our slide deck. All right, let's go on to tip number two. So tip number two is to create a resource library and store all of your, res your freebie resources um, in your resource library. Uh, now, I always recommend folks use wordpress.org. Um, that is not the same as the free wordpress.com. Um, because uh, you're able to create pages and different things like that. I think you can do some of it on WordPress.com, but it's very limited because you have to pay some enormous fee to do plugins and stuff. And so um, I know that some of you guys here are on Blogger or Blogspot. Um, I would probably encourage you all to start thinking about doing self-hosting uh, WordPress or self-hosting websites. I'm not going to really get into all of that today, uh, but just know that what I have done today has all been on WordPress. So creating a resource library um, is pretty simple to do. You create a page where you've got links to all of your um, resource files, and then you create like a front page where people have to actually put in their password to get to get into it. And um, it's very similar and very simple. It's very simple and very similar to what you do with just a single resource um, freebie. Um, you create an opt-in form or a landing page. You do have some sort of way of automating the delivery of that password. So in my case, when somebody opts into the form, my email marketing platform will then send them a pre-written email that has the password and then they you know get a link to go to the, um, directly to the library and then of course you would want to advertise this opt-in form everywhere you would uh, advertise if you just had a single resource to give away now i'm going to show you my resource library and this would i think this would lend itself well to crafters because a lot of times we have um, auxiliary items that we need to give to folks in order for them to recreate the project at hand. So let's go to here. Um, yeah, here we go. We're going to go to my library. So this is my free resource library. And this essentially is also a landing page. So there is kind of an introduction to what the library is. Um, there's a button to go into the library. Then there's a form that allows them to register if they don't have it. So um, you can come into mine. I'll and you hit enter. And then it leads me to a page on all of the different um, resources I have created and um, allows them just to download it. So I've got lots of either cut instructions or dimensions, or sometimes I've created uh, SVG files and all of that is here in my resource library. On my main page, I believe you scroll all the way down to the bottom. Here you go, I've got a little link here. This is free resource library. And if I, yeah, you go to that same cover letter or cover page, I suppose. And then if you have the link to go to the library, which you guys can definitely go check it out. And then um, you put that in there, or if you don't have access already, then you just put your information there and then I will send it to you. So that is an example of um, 
resource library. Okay, so let's go back to our slide deck. All right, how, let's go on to step number three. Another way, or tip number three on how to grow your Facebook group. Now, I, like I've said, uh, was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I had a ton of retired product that I couldn't uh, really work with anymore because if I was wanting to promote Stampin' Up! stuff, then if I was using products that they couldn't purchase anymore, then I was basically, you know, showing content that they couldn't recreate. So I created a Facebook group around that. So I've got a uh, Facebook group, it's, uh, Stampin' Up! Retired Facebook product. No, no, that's not right. Stampin' Up! Retired, Stampin' Up! Retired product sale group. That's what it is, sorry. Um, and it's, it's basically a buy-sell group. And people go in and they um, sell their um, retired Stampin' Up! products. I originally started it as a way for me to offload my stuff, but then I quickly just saw that lots of people were interested in it. And so I decided to use it as a way to grow my email list. And I created um, join questions that asked for their email address. And it would say, if you're interested in um, accessing my free resource library, put your email address here. And so it, people jumped on it and they were loving it. And so I, uh, my group is about 17,000 right now, I think. And so um, probably 70% that joined the group uh, opt into that resource library. So um, it's a really great way. Another thing you could um, create a Facebook group around, um, you know, maybe just your community where you're sharing exclusive content. And then, you know, maybe you've got a resource or a freebie that you want to give out and you ask them for their email address. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you a little pro tip here is that you have to copy the subscriber's name and email address to a spreadsheet before you approve them. Because once you approve them, that information goes away and Facebook doesn't allow you to retrieve it afterwards. So um, I my. Uh, virtual assistant, she goes in and she has a spreadsheet in a Google Drive and she just copies the name from their um, Facebook profile and then um, adds her email address. And then when she's done with that, then she takes the spreadsheet and then she uploads it to our email marketing platform. All right, tip number four, to run a giveaway. Now, um, with the summit that we did in July, uh, part of our sponsor outreach was to allow them to do product giveaways. And so we had a ton of giveaways. And so I needed some way to manage this. And so I opted into um, purchasing a resource for it. And I'll share that with you a little later. And what I liked about it was that not only did it allow them to give you your name and email address, but then there was a way for them to um, get more entries, if you will, more chances to win by doing certain things like liking your Facebook page or subscribing to your YouTube channel or, you know, following you on Instagram. And so it also kind of viral effect um, allowed me to increase those other channels as well. So different ways you can do this. You can use your, your um, email marketing platform to create an opt-in. It's a little bit more manual, but you know, however you plan to do the drawing. Um, I like the sweepstakes software because it automates the process and it also helps you keep compliant. Um, there are lots of laws surrounding how you do um, giveaways and sweepstakes and stuff like that. So definitely want to check what your own country's rules are and laws and stuff. So you would advertise this uh, any way you um, would, steps number one through three. And, um, you know, on your um, website, on your Facebooks, you know, just everywhere you would advertise, you could also advertise a giveaway. And, you know, with uh, the brands that we work with, especially if you have affiliate brands, don't hesitate, don't be shy to reach out to them and say, hey, 
I'd like to do a giveaway in conjunction with this uh, uh, project that you're having me do. Um, you know, they don't need to send you any more product because they are the ones that will be sending it directly to the winners. Um, I never send out uh, product giveaways myself. The only time I ever done that was when I gave away paper. Um, this last go, at, go around, the manufacturer that I um, buy my paper from, that I sell in my store, they sent me the paper and then I sent it out to the winners. But all of the other giveaways that I gave, the the agreement I had with my sponsors to say, you give me one of whatever you want to give away, and then I will draw winners and I'll give you the information and you can mail it directly to them. So I didn't have all that shipping cost. And if they're already sending you the product for you to use in whatever affiliate um, blog post or content that you're creating, I mean, just ask them if they'd be interested in giving away a bundle of products, whatever you're using. And, and, you know, do a giveaway. It just allows them to, allows you to increase your email subscriber list that way. All right. The last tip I'm going to share with you, of course, leading up to this is to become a speaker at a craft virtual summit. Now, some summits um, vary and the host, whoever's running them will have different ways of doing it, but most of them will give the speaker or a, you know, their speakers, a portion of the attendee email list. I, for example, had a way of collecting email addresses um, if the audience member opted in to get that particular speaker's worksheet and, um, you know, had it set up so they knew ahead of time that if you opt in for the worksheet, the speaker is going to get your contact information so they can follow up and cheer you along. And so that um, was a great benefit for our speakers to be able to increase their email subscriber list. And so, um, you know, just it just depends on the summit that you participate in. But that's something to definitely look at. If you're going to be participating in a craft summit, with uh, another brand or whatever, definitely look at and uh, definitely ask the host or whoever is providing it, how can I get some of the email subscription list? I mean, can we do something where if they opt into something that I provide, that I can get um, a part of that email subscription list? Because I'm telling you all, email list is the way to go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about our suggested tech resources. Now I mentioned uh, often about the email marketing platform, um, but my example, what I use is ConvertKit. Um, I've got a link up there. It is an affiliate link um, where you can get uh, ConvertKit for free. I think it's, I don't know, I think it's free for a thousand subscribers or something like that. And there are certain limitations on the free port, um, program, but it definitely is something that can get you started. Um, there are lots of tutorials and um, stuff out there. ConvertKit's support's really good. I love it. It allows me to tag um, my, uh, my subscribers and allows me to better um, segment who I send emails to. Um, so I'll give you just an example. So we had 12,000 people register for the free summit that we offered in July. And, you know, a certain percentage of those folks actually purchased the upgrade. So when I was um, wanting to send an email out promoting the paid upgrade, I didn't want to send that information to the people who already purchased it. So having a way to tag and segment your email list is worth its weight in gold. A digital delivery system, um, how I automate the delivery of my uh, uh, PDFs. I use Sendow and that is another uh, uh, affiliate link there. Um, the other thing I didn't put on the slide, but I do want to mention is the sweepstakes uh, platform that I use. I used Viral Sweep and you can find that at stampmesomelove.com forward slash viral hyphen sweep. All right, now 
let's get into what a virtual summit is. So a virtual summit is a virtual gathering centered around a topic that the audience is interested in. So think of, you know, your typical conventions, you know, your craft retreats. That's essentially what a summit is, only it's virtual. Um, you could interchange the word summit with conference or whatnot, but I think that um, summit has a kind of a catchy tune to it. Um, the attendees are typically given tons of valuable information and resources, and typically it's free for a limited time. Um, this being free is optimal in order to get the most people subscribed in. Um, I know that I've seen some, particularly brands, um, who will do some sort of craft retreat or whatnot. And unless they're providing physical product, I don't think that um, having a summit that there's not some sort of free portion to it is uh, profitable, if I should say, if that makes sense. I mean, you really want to get as many people in, uh, to get as many eyeballs in, because it's all about numbers and converting. And how many people can you convert from the free product to the paid product? And then lastly, there is usually some sort of paid upgrade that allows them longer access to the content. All right. So let's talk a little bit about what's involved in participating in a craft summit. Speakers are um, asked to provide some sort of presentation uh, or they're asked to participate in an interview. Now, I don't see a lot of uh, need for us to do like an interview type way, but if you find summits that are on a more of a business aspect and you're looking at folks that are doing um, want B2B type stuff, then you will find that there are a lot more summits out there that do interview type summits. It's not something that I think I will be doing. I mainly ask my speakers to provide some sort of presentation. In our case, we do cards. So I ask them to create one to two cards around a specific theme. Um, in July, it was Christmas. And that presentation um, could be live or pre-recorded. Um, live scares me. So I uh, typically ask my speakers to do pre-recorded where they create a video and then they submit that to me. All right. Speakers usually earn a commission when someone, looks like that word is misspelled, purchases an upgrade. And the, the typical commission rates for um, these upgrades are somewhere between 30 and 50%. That is an industry norm. Um, uh, you'll find out a little bit later on how, what I um, usually pay my speakers, which is um, usually pretty, I mean, it's pretty good. I'm just saying, it's pretty good. All right, um, usually the summits will ask the speakers to contribute some sort of digital resource, something of value as a bonus to the paid upgrade. So our upgrade was called the VIP All Access Pass. And let me just make sure I've lost some windows here. I wanna make sure you guys are still hearing me. Let me stop screen real quick. All right, it looks like you guys are still with me. Can you just shout out? Yes, okay, thank you, Libby. <laughs> All right, let me go back to my share screen. I started talking on and on and I, I, oh, I hope I'm not talking to the wind. All right, so um, we asked them to contribute some sort of digital resource, something of value as a bonus to the paid upgrade. The reason we do this is because it helps the overall perceived value of the upgrade. It makes it more of a no brainer. Um, if folks can get you know, access to all the presentations, plus they get all the, these bonuses that the speakers have contributed, it makes it easier and um, less, it puts up less barriers for them to say, yes, so I wanna pay for that. The resource that you are asked to provide for your bonus is typically more valuable than your freebie. So we all saw my, um, we all saw, let's see where I heard it. I've lost it again. Oh, it's, it was taking me to here. 
Okay, we, so we all saw my 10 steps uh, to organize a craft room. It's five pages long. But now I have this resource here that is the organization, a uh, craft room organization, your guide to a creative space. This is 29 pages long, and this is, um, I value this at $49, which I do sell on my website. Um, sometimes I um, give it away for $17 as a trip buyer once they sign up for my free resource. But as you can see, it's much more extensive and it's much more valuable. And so this is what I would consider a bonus for a our VIP all access pass. Another example of a free resource would be, let's see, I think it's here. Where'd it go? Now let's go to my Sandy School of Academy, Teachable. All right, so in my store, uh, my, my online school, I have these little mini courses. They're valued around $17. Um, this last go around, I included this course as um, my uh, freebie bonus, not freebie, free, excuse me, my all access bonus. And hey, so Brandy, we're, we're, not, we're not seeing the actual school. Another addition um, to the overall value of that all access pass. All right, so let's go back here. All right, let's move on. There is usually some sort of live component to the event. I find this is very helpful and it, it, it allows our speakers to engage with the audience member, which the audience members love. And this last go around, we did a dedicated time where the speaker was live via chat box. Um, or you can do a live stream, like a Facebook Live. We actually did both. We did a live chat box on the page where the video was playing at a specific time. And then some of our speakers hopped over into Facebook and did a Facebook Live. All right, so let's kind of um, talk a little bit about how virtual craft summits can elevate your brand, increase your email subscriber list, and make money while doing it. So first of all, virtual summits can put your brand on a global stage. We had several international speakers this last summit and um, our audience members were finding people that they had never seen before and are now loyal uh, subscribers and loyal followers and customers of our speakers. If it is done right, if you maximize all of the different ways you can expect to double, if not triple, your email list. And I will tell you that in the expert blogging world, most experts will tell you that you need to have at least a thousand subscribers in order to start promoting your own paid products. So if you have the intention of creating courses or creating you know, any type of paid product, your goal should be to increase your list to at least a thousand people. And then of course, promoting the event and earning paid affiliate income for the upgrade portion of the summit can be profitable. All right, so this figure right here is the average commission that we paid out our speakers for the last summit, $1,500. I will tell you that a lot of our speakers had a lot, they got paid a lot more than this. And some of them actually were paid uh, five digits. So it can be an extremely profitable situation to be a speaker of a card maker, of, of a summit. Now that number there is strictly the amount that we paid out to our speakers. It does not include any affiliate sales that came from supplies or revenue they generated elsewhere on their websites. For example, if someone had courses on their website already, then at once they have their email address, now they're able to market to those people to be able to try to sell other products. All right, 
let's talk about some case studies to give you an idea of some numbers that we were able to glean from our last summit. Speakers increased their email subscribers. Now we've had two different categories of speakers in this last group. We had speakers that had no email list prior to the summit and they averaged an 850 increase in subscribers that basically were given to them at the end of the summit. Um, some, of, some of our speakers had more than this, some of them had less, but we averaged out about 850 people that either opted into their freebie resource, or not the freebie, but their, um, their worksheet and that sort of thing. Now those speakers who had existing email subscriber lists pre-summit, they averaged a 263% increase. And of course, those you know, numbers really based, um, are really dependent on how well they were engaged in the summit. Um, did they you know, speak up a lot in the group? Did they you know, really go the extra mile? So those are um, some phenomenal numbers, I think. YouTube increased, uh, speakers increased their, increased their YouTube subscribers an average of 65%. Now this is, these numbers came from when I was pitching our speakers, we did kind of an audit of their social media channels and indicated what their subscriber list was pre us pitching them and then as what the count was after the summit. So there was a good five months in between. And so some of that increase is going to be natural growth from their own marketing efforts. But that's just to kind of give us an idea. YouTube does not put out any type of average um, growth for, for channels because it all just depends on what you put into it. But that's what we saw was an average of 65%. On Instagram, Instagram, our fall, our speakers averaged about a 25 increase in Instagram following. And I was able to find a nice little statistic from Flick Duck Tech that the average Insta follower growth is about 4% a month. So as you can see, this is pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna pause the training here. Um, in our original training, which occurred in the fall of 2021, um, the next few slides were all about applying to be a speaker for our February summit. Well, uh, we already have our speakers lined up and we're getting ready to um, have that summit in a few weeks. But I thought I would come in and talk to you a little bit about uh, potentially becoming a speaker for our next summit, which will be in July. And so the next few slides here are going to be pertaining to that. So just know that if the video looks odd and um, the voice sounds different, it's because I've kind of spliced up this training a little bit to be more time relevant. All right, so what happens if you want to become a, or you want to apply to become a speaker for our next summit? All right, so our next um, Card Maker Success Summit is going to be July 28th through the 31st. This particular summit's theme is going to be all, around, all about our year-end holidays. So think of Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, those types of holidays. Now we've got some important deadlines for you to consider if you're thinking about potentially applying. These are the deadlines that you would be expected um, to go by. So make sure you take a look at these dates and to see if they line up with your own personal calendar. We're going to be having formal applications until the 26th of February. Our speaker lineup um, hopefully will be finalized by the 12th of March. Um, we will have um, different um, tasks after this that you will need to supply. So your basic um, bio information, which I will send you a form for you to fill out all of this information. That's going to be due on March, 20, uh, March 25th. Your presentation, your video, which I'm going to go into more depth as to what re is required of that. That would be due April 22nd. And then the rest of the items um, are, you know, pretty simple as far as um, executing them. Your speaker supply list and your step-by-step -step instructions shouldn't be too much to do since you've already done the presentation. That's going to be due on the 29th of April. Your photographs of your final presentation, your flat overlays will be due May 5th. 
And then the last two items here on the list are optional. You can do this if you want to. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Um, I always provide training for my speakers on how they can do this to kind of help um, bring another level um, to the summit. It also helps with your conversion rates. But the last two um, um, activities here are um, if you want to do a freebie, similar to what we talked about earlier in the training, that would need to be done by the 6th. And then if you're going to um, offer an all-access um, pass contribution bonus, that would be due by the 9th. Again, those last two items are not required, but if you want to kind of step up your game, uh, per se, and increase your chances for conversions, then those two items down below are definitely recommended. All right, so here's what we're looking for. We're looking for 23 to 30 different speakers. Um, we're looking for all types of card maker, influencer, teachers. Um, you do not have to be a quote unquote influencer. You don't have to have thousands and thousands of followers on your YouTube or your um, Instagram for, uh, for, us to, for you to be selected. Uh, we're looking for diversity and techniques in different mediums. We like to have our summits well-rounded. All right, so here's some information about the application process. You will be given a URL for you to go and actually fill out the form in order to apply to be considered as a speaker. You're going to be asked to provide a working example of a video that you have created. This could be something on your YouTube channel or it could be something else recorded. So if you don't have a YouTube channel or you're not um, active on YouTube, but maybe you do Facebook Lives or you do um, some other type of recorded um, teaching, then um, I'll need to see a copy of that. So you'll be asked to put a URL. So if it's something that lives on your computer, you'll want to upload it to Dropbox or um, Drive and send me the URL and put that um, in the application. Um, the videos need to be either edited with a voiceover or your voice while you're working on the project. Um, we do not accept videos that just have an overview shot and music playing in the background. I need to hear how you engage with your audience. And um, so that is a requirement. Um, your video example does not have to be newly created. So if you've got something that you've done in the past, you wanna repurpose it to send to me, perfect, that's great. Um, you will be asked um, statistics on any, um, any email list that you may have, your Instagram following, your YouTube following, your website, monthly page views, that, that sort of thing. I use this information to help balance our speaker lineup. We want to have a good mix of both seasons, um, card makers, influencers, as well as up and coming card makers. What I'm going to be looking at is the quality of your work. Um, it doesn't necessarily need, um, mean that you have to have large following, but I do like to know what your following is so we can kind of balance out our speaker lineup. All right, so your presentation can be no longer than 25 minutes. So it needs to be 25 minutes or less, a maximum of two cards created. Um, I would highly recommend that you do something simple versus complex uh, because we tend to find that those more complex cards, um, you have a hard time getting that all recorded and edited down to 25 minutes. So simplicity is the way to go. Make sure that you're, um, you're in your video that you would be permit, uh, submitting, no, in the video that you would be using in the summit, you have to make sure that you are showing each technique at least once in its entirety before fast forwarding that footage. We wanna make sure that our audience walks away with a full understanding on how to create the card. You may and you are encouraged to pitch a freebie during your video presentation. This is an opportunity to get more folks to your website to opt in to your lead magnet and give you their email address. So again, you can increase your email list subscription um, list. Your presentation can be used for other similar type events, other summits or whatnot, but you cannot provide it freely on your website or your social media channels. Doing so would diminish the VIP all access pass. All right, some more important information about freebies and all access pass contributions. You are encouraged to create a freebie resource and an opt-in form on your website so you can direct people so they can sign up and get your resource file. 
you are encouraged to create a more valuable um, bonus that you can contribute to the All Access Pass. And this um, will help us um, get an overall perceived value of that All Access Pass, that it's even a better deal. And additionally, it allows more opportunities for the audience members to sign up. And the All Access Pass um, that you would contribute, if you want to, needs to be 100% completely free and have a value of at least $20. We ask that you keep the um, bonus available to our VIP All Access members for at least 30 days after the summit has after the summit has closed to give them time to redeem their bonus. You can offer a second bonus, like if you have a store or something that you want to um, offer like a promo code or a discount um, to your um, particular brand or a brand that you work with that may not necessarily be um, your store. You can do that for free. I won't charge you for that as a sponsor, but you have to provide at least one resource of at least $20 before you can do that. You can sell um, your bonus that you create for the summit um, on your website at any time, and we encourage you to do so. Again, that increases the overall perceived value of the All Access Pass. All right, and here is the link for you to apply. Um, Stampysomelove.com forward slash CMMS, CMSS July 2022 hyphen speaker hyphen interest. And you just go and fill out that form. I'm going to show you what that form looks like in just a second. And again, I really enjoy working with um, potential speakers. I enjoy working with other crafters and helping you elevate your craft brand, your craft business. And I feel like as a community, if we come together, um, we just sort of raise and elevate each other. So the famous um, quote from John F. Kennedy is that a rising tide lifts all boats. And I feel that is um, really important for us to be able to help each other and support each other. And this is my way of supporting other crafters. All right, so let me see if I can show you the form. So this is the form that you would be filling out. Um, you want to select the different options of techniques that you think that you excel at and you could teach others. Here is um, a place for you to put a URL of an example of your video work. Um, a URL example of your flat, way, flat lay work. Basically, those are the photos that you share on Instagram. And then all of your contact details and the number of followers you have on your different um, social media channels. If you have a list, and if so, what are the numbers um, that you have on your email list? Um, if you already have a freebie resource that you would like to share with the audience, what that URL is, so I can kind of check that out. If you have a current store, if you sell physical or digital products, and of course, if you intend to promote, promote the event, if you become a speaker. So that's basically it. Let me flash that screen back here where you would go to apply. Um, and there's the link. So anyway, I hope you found this training valuable. If you've got any questions for me, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, on our next screen in the video, I will put the link where you can go to schedule a personal one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me and um, ask me personally any of the questions that you have regarding being a speaker of the Cardmaker Success Summit. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.